You ever needed to bend a piece of PVC pipe like that? Well, I haven't either. But you can. I'm not going to be doing that today. I'm going to be making a uh, kid's bow out of PVC. Wow, like this thing right here. Actually, this is an older model. This is the one that we're going to be making. Uh, with this mold right here. Uh, but I want to make two videos today. The first one, I'm going to cut and piece these together. But the first one, I'm going to talk about this bender right here. Well, this is actually a heater uh, that I use to heat the pipe up. It's 50 inches long, or it'll heat a 50 inch piece of pipe, and then I can put it into the mold and press it into shape the way that I want to. This is a really simple uh, heater but it works really great where you can do stuff like this, okay? So if you're a plumber or you need to do some plumbing and you need a piece of PVC to wrap around a tree, uh, you can do that with this, with this okay? Very simple design. Um, I'll take the camera down and get a close up, but basically, um, you know, I'm just using this Wagner, this is a cheap one, but it's a, it's actually a pretty good one. Uh, it's about 20 bucks. This Wagner uh, heat gun, and it goes in the bottom right here. Fits in there. That's just a two inch hole. And then I've got a piece of conduit, a metal conduit, electrical con, metal electrical conduit in here that runs almost to the end. Okay. Uh, there's a little bit of a gap at the end, about a one inch gap at the end. So basically what happens is the hot air goes in the bottom. It runs on under the metal conduit. So it's heating the metal conduit from the bottom up. Then it goes down around the end and then back down the conduit, down through the middle of the conduit and through the middle of the PVC pipe, which we can just stick right in here like this. Stick it right in there, so it's running through the middle of the pipe. It's heating from the outside, from the inside. Heats it up really evenly. It doesn't overheat it. It never burns it, and that makes it where you can pull it out and do it like this, about, about like a piece of spaghetti. Um, easy setup, something you can use. Uh, let me take the camera down. I'll show you what's going on. Okay, here's a close up. Basically, I just uh, have a. A wood box you can see down in there well maybe you can see down in there it's basically just a wood box and this is a two inch hole it just opens up all the way down the, the box it's just uh, you know stapled nailed and stapled together and then I've got this uh, piece of you know metal conduit here um, it, it's just a piece of electrical stuff you can buy it at um, Home Depot Home Depot or something for a couple of bucks I just drilled out, used a whole saw, drilled both of these saws, put the thing together. The only thing I had to do was down at the end down here, the conduit comes to about here, and I put this nail through there, and that is uh, just something for the back end of the conduit to rest on. So that hot air comes down the length of the pipe, comes up and around, goes down through the conduit, it exhausts out the... Uh, out the end there. So, I mean, this, is, uh, this isn't this is rocket surgery. This is a pretty simple setup, but what's great about it is that it heats things very evenly. So there's the pipe just sitting in there. I have to push it, push it in there, and then I pull it out a little bit so that the air can come in the back and circulate around. This is just a piece of aluminum that's a heat deflector so that when the gun's on there, the hot air coming out here just doesn't hit the gun. It just, it's deflected up. So that's it. I'm going to turn this thing on and uh, heat some pipe. Okay, I'm going to turn this on to high. Because we've got to get this thing hot. Now you see it's red hot, really hot. But this will distribute the heat. I used a uh, probe with a, with a bolt on meter to check the temperature. And we're getting up to about 320 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, about 130 degrees Celsius, something like that. And that's about right. It gets it hot enough, you'll see it's very flexible, but it never gets it hot enough to burn the pipe or even make the pipe deform. And, and that's 
why we can wrap it around uh, something like this. I think this, yeah, this was wrapped around um, a coffee can. Now, when this pipe goes in, uh, I cut the pipe 50 inches long. It's going to shrink about an inch when it gets hot. So it must be part of the extrusion process. It's sort of stretched out and elongated, but once it warms up, it's going to shrink in a little bit. So keep that in mind. I'm making uh, this bow is, uh, it ends up being 48 inches. So uh, 50 inches shrinks to 49 inches. And then when I put it in there with the bend in there, it ends up being a 48 inch bow. So basically all we have to do now is let it heat up. Okay, while that's heating up, let's talk about this bow. This is a basic uh, recurve bow for kids. It's just going to be our pipe. Uh, we're going to press it into the mold and it's going to do two things. It's going to add the recurve, it's going to flatten it out. And then it, it also presses this handle into it. Okay, so all we have to do after we do this is, uh, you know, like this one, just I drill a hole in there and stick a, it, it's, this is for kids, so I kind of make a permanent string. I drill a hole in there and um, tie it on where they can't really take the string off. But, but it can be loosened, can be let down. Um, the key to doing this bow is having a good mold. And you can see, that was my first try. Well, actually, that was my first test of the, of the heater. So you can do this three-quarter, you can also do, the, or this is three-quarter, and this is half-inch PVC. Either one of them will work inside of here. So that was the first test. Uh, that was the first mold, which was no good. And then, uh, you know, I just tried a lot of different things. Uh, I think I'm on, this is the sixth version. You know, I tried, uh, like this one was a really nice version where the handle is pressed in sideways. So when you draw it back, it was lined up with the center of the bowstring. Unfortunately, uh, when the bowstring's on there, the pipe's not quite strong enough. It, it bends this way just a little bit. So I had to change that. Um, tried different tapers, uh, moving from, from here out. Uh, just a lot of different things to get a design that I like. But this is a pretty good one, and I'm about to uh, use this design, completely redo the mold, to make it exactly the way that I want. But just takes time and trying different things. Now I will clue you into one thing. If you, I have some like this one that have been completely smashed. You can see that there. They're completely smashed. That reduces the weight of the bow. So this might be, you know, a 10 pound. And if you don't smash it all the way, uh, like this one, see how that's opened up a little bit? If you don't smash it all the way, it adds more rigidity to it, and this is probably about a 15 pound pull, which is, you know, this is good for kids, you know, six to eight years old. My son's eight, and he can just pull this one back, or one like this. He can just pull it back. It's a third, it'll, you know, use those 38 inch kids' arrows. The lighter, the better. Um, and it'll draw back the full 38 inches. Okay, this is starting to get hot. I'm just going to turn it around. Getting flexible. But... And see what I'm doing is pushing it all the way back and then pulling it forward just a little bit. The first one that you do takes a long time because this whole box has to heat up. So it takes some time. Now here's the mold that I'm using. Let's see. Basically, get the right one. Done. 
it's going to sit in there like that. Okay, we'll press it in there like that, and then this is the uh, this is our pressing, and we just use some clamps, smash that thing down, and then it's designed where it stops when this is flush. So as long as I go, you know, together with the clamps, it's flush here, everything stops. It's right in place. Got the nice uh, slow taper recurve at the end, and then the handle. The handle, you actually have to. Uh, squeeze it and press it in there first and then lay everything out straight. Now you can't just let it align itself. You have to uh, make sure that it's in the slots up here and then you have to eyeball it and make sure that it's straight um, through here because the pipe is very flexible. It will tend to be uh, wavy as you set it in there and it will come out crooked. Other thing too is if you lay it down like this, it'll all go down to one side and be crooked that way. So you don't want to do this, you want to have it straight up, you want to lay it in there, put your handle in there, make sure the pipe is straight, then press down. That's what we'll do. We'll check on this. Again, this first one takes a while because, oh, the seat, look at that. See how flexible we're getting? It takes a lot longer. It's not hot. Once it's hot, we'll have um, you know a minute or so that we can work with it. This is uh, cooling off real quickly. So push it all the way in, and I'm backing it off a little bit. You can also do this with with the uh, tailpipe of your car. If it's fairly straight, you can get it in there. So if you're in a pinch, you're on the job site, crank up your car, stick a piece of pipe up in there, it'll heat up. It can overheat though, so, so watch out. It's not as controlled as this, and on you know, the temperature outside and how hot your car is, you can overheat and burn the pipe. But in a pinch, it works great. You can stick a piece of pipe up in there and bend it the way you need. Alright, I'm just testing with my fingers to see how flexible that is. Now in order to bend this or form it in the mold, you've got to have it a little softer than you would need for bending it for plumbing. See, and that's plenty soft for bending it for plumbing, but we're going to give it a little bit harder just by leaving it in there a little longer. Now you can already see when I that it pushes way back in there. It's about an inch shorter than it was to start out with. So I'm pushing it all the way back, pulling it out a little. I really don't need to be this particular about it, but better to have it plenty hot than too cool. All right, pipe comes out. Find our center point. And I squeeze it a little bit. Put it down in there where the handle is. Line this up. We've got to make sure we're straight here. We've got a few seconds we can work with this. We don't have long, but maybe 45 seconds or so. Everything looks good and straight. These blocks 
keep the press in the right place. Okay, everything looks good there. Now, if I were making another one, I would go ahead and put another piece of pipe in here, but since I'm not, I'm going to turn that off. Okay, been a few minutes, probably about 10 now. I had to take a break because my camera ran out of memory. And all we do is take the clamps off, take the press board out, and pop it out. And there we have it. There's your bow. Uh, I'll show you in just a sec how to put a string on.